Welcome, thank you for joining us. This is Barry Wrestling's Rush Hour. I am Mike Jeffries, the host of Rush Hour and the play-by-play voice at Barry Wrestling. And fans, we are so excited. We are less than two weeks away from celebrating 10 years of Barry Wrestling. Yes, our 10th anniversary show, November 2nd, 49 Ferris Lane, right here in Barry. If you don't have your tickets yet, reach out to Barry Wrestling through any social media platform. Get your tickets. They will sell out. And fans, if you can't be there live, you can always catch it and all of our shows is on IWTV, that's independentwrestling.tv or the IWTV app on your phone. If you're not signed up, use the code Barry400, let them know we sent you. Now, as for tonight's episode of Rush Hour, what better way to celebrate 10 years of Barry than a tag team between one of our OGs, the Golden Gun Mark Wheeler, and the leader of the new crop of stars, Clutch Jesse V. Together, they are known as Locked and Loaded, and they'll be taking on the top tier talent in our main event. We also have a three pistols title matchup between Myung J. Lee defending his title against Judas Icarus. You might recognize Judas as one half of Sinner and Saint, the young tag team that is tearing it up right now in TNA. But our opening matchup, it is a grudge match. Rajan Husher made his surprise debut on our last episode, attacking Van Landen. And the high octane hometown hero himself, Van, I can't do it like TCO does it, Van Landen has demanded a matchup with the tor- tortured artist, Rajan Husher. So fans, that's where we're starting this show off. Take a seat. Make sure your seatbelt's buckled because we are revving this into high gear. Van Landen, Rajan Husher. This is Barry Wrestling's Rush Hour. Introducing first, from Brampton, Ontario, weighing in at 198 pounds, he is the artist, Rajan Husher. Diamond Jim, this man made his debut out of nowhere last month, attacking Van Landen from behind and smashing him over the head with a painting. What do we know about this guy? Not a lot, but that is, is that the same painting, Mike? I, I think, it looks like it's the same painting. He just taped it back together. That How is, sick is that? That had Van Landen's blood on. Uh, you can still see it. He, he is the artist, Rajan Husher, and, and looking to make an impact here in Barry Wrestling by going after the most popular man we have here. It, he's a very tortured man. I, I tried to learn about him. Uh, I found some of his art online. It was very dark, very disturbing, but I don't know where he comes from. I don't know what his mission is. He's just made it very clear that this is the way he's going to pursue this. crowd loves this guy, Mike. Barry Wrestling's fans voted in 2022 for their number one most favorite wrestler, most popular wrestler, whatever term you want to use. My brain skipped a beat there, I'm sorry. You're just excited to see Van Landen. I am. And the energy in this crowd is overwhelming to you. I get it, I get it, Mike. Aurelia's own Van Landen, Aurelia's favorite son, Barry's adopted favorite son. Well, he's probably the only good thing that ever came out of Aurelia. Gordon Lightfoot? Well, obviously. All right, thank you. And so if you want to talk about a matchup between somebody incredibly popular and somebody that has certainly made a negative uh, name for himself here in Barry, this is it. And you see right off that Rajan Husher not appreciating the crowd's appreciation of Van Landen. Well, he's obsessed with Van Landen. He's been releasing creepy videos talking about him, making these these paintings, and I, I don't understand it. Like, I could not find any evidence that these men had ever encountered each other before. They haven't wrestled each other before. But this artist is, is obsessed with Van Landen and, and it's it's bizarre. Well we've seen I mean you've seen it happen with you know celebrities with stalkers or people that blame random celebrities for all the bad things in their lives. I mean maybe that's this that somehow Husher is is blaming Van Landen for whatever has gone wrong in his life that has led him to, to be like this? 
but Usher isn't some you know random painter. Look at the man is tall, he is fit, and right now he's taking it to Van Landen. He's clearly had some wrestling training. What is he? What is, he is he painting Van Landen? I mean, I've heard of paintbrushing somebody, but th that's not usually what it means. That'll leave a, a that will leave a mark. Just trading chops in the middle of the ring. Van Landen and Rajan Husher just leaving dents in each other's chests. I don't know how good the strategy is here for either of them. Is he he biting Van Landen? Van ducks the clothesline, German suplex. Van Landen holding on. Usher trying to grab the rope, but can't a second German suplex. Great strength being shown by Van Landen. Van Landen's revving up for the European tour, but Usher had that scouted and got out of the ring. I don't know how you approach this match if you're Van Landen, because Usher clearly knows everything that Van Landen does. But what does Van Landen know about him? Well, Van Landen busts that out instead, going up over the top with the plancha and firing up the Barry Wrestling Faithful. Usher seems stunned right now. Van Landen coming crashing down on him. And then a double chop to the throat, stopping the momentum of the hometown hero. And Usher pounding Van Landen's face off the apron. And then head first into the stairs. They might not be steel stairs here in Barry, but those solid wooden stairs don't have a whole lot of give. And Van Landen went head first. Jim, how, like you were saying, how do you how do you game plan for somebody who is doing things like this? But also, like, he clearly knows how to wrestle as well. So you know, I think you can prepare for an unpredictable brawler. If you think it's just some some guy from the audience, you can take him down, you can stretch him, but you know, he's been able to counter everything that, that Van Landen's thrown at him. And they're just putting all of his weight on the back of the neck of Van Landen, putting his throat across that middle rope. You can see the how red Van Landen's chest is from those chops earlier. Usher with a snap mare into a cover. Not going to pick up the win there, but forcing Van Landen to kick out, sapping a little bit of strength. And then, same thing, wrenching on that jaw and that neck. That is a deep, deep chin lock. Oh, and he's got a... Ref doesn't see it. He had a... Look at the biceps on this guy. Like, this is not someone who's spent years in the basement painting. Oh, that is the most Jack painter I have ever seen. This is an athlete. Jawbreaker by Van Landen to break the hold. And then up to his feet. Husher with the counter. And a kick from Rajan Husher dropping Van Landen into a cover. Near fall. Husher unable to keep Van Landen down for the three. And now just a, a standing mount ground and pound punches to the forehead. You know, he busted Van Landen open with that painting last month. I think he's looking to bust him open again, this time using his knuckles. I just want to know why. Like, I, I do not understand. Van Landen is one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. He's a young man who comes up, he seeks you out to shake your hand, to talk to you, and yeah, this artist seemingly wants to end them. To steal from a famous movie, Jim, some people just want to watch the world burn. Please don't get a suit. Oh, and an enziguri from Husher. Van Landen might be unconscious. Into the cover. Gets the right shoulder up at the last second. Usher's just staring at Van Landen. There is a darkness in his eyes, in his expressions that just, it's haunting. You need to look at some of his art. It, it's legitimately creepy. Well, Van Landen looking to turn the momentum around with a series of knife edge chops. 
and he's a talented painter, but there's just a menace to what he paints, and there's a menace to what he does in the ring. Oh, and a high angle back suplex. Great show of strength from Rajon Husher, and Van Landen gets the shoulder up. And Husher throwing a, I don't want to call it a tantrum, but he's very upset. And Jim, often when we see these types of, I think of like Reverso, these very evil, dark people, they seem to enjoy inflicting pain on their opponents. I don't think Husher's really even enjoying this. He's just doing, almost out of a compulsion, he's just doing this. That's a great observation, Mike. And yeah, you know, like looking at the way he moves, the way, you know, he doesn't grin or, or laugh when, when he accomplishes his goal. He just applies more punishment and inflicts more pain. Great counter by Van Landen, that European uppercut. You could hear the echo off the walls here. And again, and now he's going for the European tour, and he drills him, planting him in the corner with another European uppercut, sending Husher across. Van Landen's revving up. And again with the European uppercut, Snapmare takeover. Van Landen off the ropes, building momentum. Husher, though, able to, to roll out of the way and counter and into an arm bar. Van Landen. Van Landen gonna tap here. Well, Van Landen there was able to hold on to the hand slightly and then reverses the pressure into a roll up. Oh. Husher, great grappling there by Van Landen. That was a scramble and he was able to secure a front headlock. Now getting Van Landen up for a suplex. Nice counter. Husher, though, off the road, runs into a European uppercut. I don't like the paint right off your canvas. Really? I had to. Come on. And Van Lennon, he might not fly, but here's some aviation for you. Going for the airplane spin. Rajan Husher. Not really sure where he's at right now. Van Landen's a little really, bit dizzy himself. It's really the first time we haven't seen Husher completely focused on Van Landen. And Van Landen, he's going, he's going for the motorplex. But Husher, again, had it well scouted, scouted. Elbows to the back of the head. He fires Van Landen into the corner, full force. And double knees to the wow. chest. And look at that, look at his chest, Mike. And going for a spinning kick there. Van Landen able to duck. And now Van Landen, oh, almost, a, almost an angle slam by Van Landen. I don't think I've ever seen him bust that one out. Into a cover. And Husher gets the shoulder up. Van Landen's got to stay focused here. He can't let this man get back into whatever zone he's been in. You make a very good point. Rajan Husher seems to be thrown off right now, but counter. Pounding on the chest again of Van Landen. He's caving in the lungs of the local. And then a, just a drop suplex. Usher tossing Van Landen. Now, he's going, we saw this last month. He calls this Minerva. It's his version of the Rings of Saturn. If he gets this locked in, it is done. Oh, oh, my. oh. Trying to break the fingers of Van Landen. Van Landen's got nowhere to go. Trapped in the middle of the ring. Kid just tap out. Able to roll! Van oh. Landen picks up the victory! But Husher's not letting go! Come on, somebody's gotta do something about this guy. He is a danger. He's clawing at his eyes. The match is over, Rajan, let go! Van Landen is out cold. The sick man, Rajan Hush Husher. And look, again, as you said, like he's not hot, there's no joy in this. And he's just sick. Van Landen victorious over Rajan Husher, but he doesn't, he doesn't look like the winner right now. This man is sick. The match is over. Somebody get out here, get him out of here. Van Landen is seriously hurt. The crowd letting Husher know what they think about him. 
Your winner is Van Landen, but as you said, Jim, at what cost? Welcome everyone to Barry Wrestling's Long Way to the Top. It is sold out here in the FLCC. I am Mike Jeffries. Alongside me, as always, is Diamond Jim Lowe. And we are starting off with a banger, the Three Pistols Championship. Judas Icarus challenging Myung J. Lee. Diamond Jim, wh what are we expecting from this match? Two of the brightest young stars in this sport. I can't believe this match came together so quickly. We saw Icarus at our last show. He was been the talk of Barry Wrestling, but he's going up against the hottest wrestler bar none in Barry, Young Jay Liu, who's just been on a tear since winning that title, Mike. Judas, Judas Icarus made his debut last month here in Barry, taking on Von Vertigo in a very early match of the year candidate. Now Icarus came up just a bit short against the Visionary, but it was an absolute war. Myung Jae Lee, as you mentioned, since winning the Three Pistols Championship, obviously undefeated as he still has his title. And he has shown that he can go up against anybody, different sizes, different styles. This should be a very hard-hitting matchup. Two relatively similar styles in the ring. Myung Jae Lee, last month, you're underselling this young man. He defeated two former Barry Wrestling Heavyweight Champions in the same match, Mike. Reverso and Gabriel Fuerza in a triple threat match. Now in the ring, Myung Jae Lee working over the arm on Icarus. Icarus transitions, nice nice ring move there, but ring awareness by Judas Icarus. I'm excited, Jim, I don't know what's going on I can't right blame now. you, you know I bust on you when I've got reason, but this whole place is buzzing with excitement about this match. Icarus coming to us from Vancouver, the Van City Vulture. I will give Barry Wrestling Management credit where it's due a great get bringing this man in from the West Coast. And Jim, to your point, Myung Jae Lee had an open challenge, a mystery opponent, and we found out it was Judas Icarus. We didn't want to keep that a mystery anymore. No, when you've got an all-star matchup like this, you tell the people about it, and I guarantee it's one of the, re the reasons why it is standing room only here, the FLCC tonight. Nice headlock takeover by Myung Jae Lee. Icarus works his way back up to his feet. A couple left hands to the gut from the Van City Vulture. Nice counter by Icarus. And we've got a standstill early on in this matchup. To me, Icarus is the prototype of what a professional wrestler should be. He has got physical mass, he can fly, but more than anything, he is a smart, smart wrestler. He can match moves with the best of them, including the Three Pistols champ. And his chops hurt a lot. I'm just assuming that sounded like it hurt. Enziguri from Young Jay Lee right on the ear. Icarus is down. Oh, exploder suplex into the corner from the champ. Young Jay Lee going for it again. Basement drop kick right on the jaw. Rearranging the chicklets into a cover. Icarus kicks out at a count of two and a half. Young Jay Lee just caught Judas Icarus right in the mouth with that basement drop kick. And a clubbing forearm to the back from Young Jay Lee. With a stiff forearm to the face as well. Seeing Lee be a bit more methodical than we usually do. Trying to slow the pace down a bit. And turn about his fair play as he has a knife edge chop of his own. Myung Jae Lee is a student of the game. I guarantee he has watched the IWTV broadcast of last month's show, studied how Icarus took the legendary Von Vertigo right to his limits, and he's come prepared, and he clearly saw something in that match that told him a different approach is necessary to be able to defeat this young man. Absolutely, and for those of you who are joining us on IWTV, thank you so much. If you haven't seen last month's show, pause this one, go watch that, and then come on back because it was arguably the great, greatest show we've ever had. Until tonight, Until Mike tonight. Jeffries, until tonight. And now, made up a new champ right here. Myung Jae Lee able to kick out. And now Icarus going for the ground and pound. He's got full mount on Myung Jae Lee, who's covering up. And look at this, look at the thickness of Icarus's upper body. Like, when a man like that is laying in those punches, he's doing lasting damage to his opponent. That is a thick man to have mounted on you. Pardon? Icarus with a series of kicks to this, you heard me, side of the face on Young Jay Lee. Icarus, as we pointed out last month, interesting footwear, lower leg wear. He's got the kick pads, 
and then his feet are wrapped, but he doesn't wear shoes. So... I, I'm sorry, that chop stopped me in mid-thought. Only a one count as he caves in Young Jay Lee's chest. But Icarus, yeah, so his, he's obviously a great martial artist and a great striker, and he prefers to go with the more karate style of footwear. It gives him the freedom to throw those kicks with reckless abandon, really. And you also got to be a little bit nuts to wrestle without shoes on. Yeah, but he does have protection on the toes. Like, honestly, it, that's the biggest worry you have is someone stomping on your foot. Just being able to, to debilitate you for a moment or two. He's well protected there, and, you know, it, it works for him. And look at the punishment he's given to the three pistols jam. It does in there. Nice counter into a face buster, and then a stomp driving the nose, the teeth of Young Jay Lee into the mat, and a shotgun basement drop kick into a cover. He's got to hook the leg. His inexperience there is showing. The champ kicks out, and uh, Icarus questioning whether or not official Brad Myers was in position. I wouldn't challenge Brad on that. He's a very good referee, usually. Allegedly. Icarus getting in there with the crowd, a bit of a distraction, and the champ taking advantage of the shot, but Icarus fires right back. He's going for a double arm DDT. Young Jay Lee slides out and uh, trading forms in the middle of the ring. East Coast and West Coast here, Buffalo and Vancouver, throwing bombs and Barry. Lee off the ropes, into a push kick to the chest. Now here's the thing that Icarus may not understand because he hasn't seen Young Jay Lee in action a lot. Oh, near to the back. Sorry, Jim, you were saying. The champ has the biggest fighting heart that we have ever seen in Barry Wrestling. He has faced absolute monsters in that ring who have pounded him into salt, and somehow he survives. Somehow he pulls out and wins in the end, and uh, you know, Icarus is going to have to be on his game to score a victory here. Oh, Icarus going for a running knife edge shot. Miss Myung-Jae Lee had a steam pump kick to the face on the outside. Tosses Icarus wow. back in. And an Insiguri caught Judas coming in. Double stomp over the top. Slingshot from Young Jay Lee. Right into the back on Judas Icarus. The challenger is in trouble. Lee going for it. He's looking for the moon landing there, I think. Nice counter by Icarus. Going for the lighthouse lariat. Well scattered by Young Jay Lee. Moon landing from Young Jay Lee. Planted That's gotta him. Be it. Only a two count. We mentioned Myung Jae Lee from Buffalo, trained at Grapplers Anonymous. That maneuver originates from Vinnie Moon, another great wrestler out of Barry. Myung Jae Lee going for his move now. This is the double stomp. If he hits it, this is over. Judas Icarus saw it coming, got out of the way. Caught him coming in with a boot and a back rake and then a slap. Driving knee to the small of the back. He's got him hooked. Into a vicious, I don't even know what to call that. Only a two count. Icarus's blend of power moves and finesse is really, it's unmatched in barrier wrestling. I don't think we've ever seen a competitor quite like, quite like Judas Icarus. He, his legs are built, he's built like tree trunks. And you're right, his upper body, he's a big guy. He doesn't look that big at first but he's just solid. He's built like a brick, you know what house? Shit house. Can we say that? I just did. Yeah. Oh. In the ring, couple of chops from Judas Icarus to Myung Jae Lee. Myung Jae Lee not feeling that one. He's firing up now. He felt that one, but he's right back to his feet. No, he did not feel that. A man's pain threshold is off the charts, Michael. And a lariat from Myung Jae Lee. Toss German suplex, folding the Van City Vulture in half into a cover, hooked the leg. Just barely got the near shoulder up. Look at the chest of Myung Jae Lee. Looks like ground beef. Icarus up to his knees. Kick right to the chest, caving it in. And again. You know, we have the Simcoe City Rovers are in attendance, and they might be looking to sign up Young Jay Lee after seeing these kicks. <laughs> oh, 
a unique counter from Icarus there, a double fist to the foot, and then a series of chops from Young Jay Lee, leg kick, going for a spinning kick, got caught, and then a slap to the ear from Icarus, and then a standing kick to the head. Lighthouse oh Lariat! Oh it's over. If he can cover him here, we have a new champion. Well, Judas Icarus isn't going for the cover, he's going to the top. How is Myung Jay Lee back up? And an Insiguri caught him. Icarus took his head off, and the champ is back up like that. And Young Jay Lee just tossed him across the ring. With psycho knee from Young Jay Lee. Icarus slowly trying to get up. He's in the wrong part of town, though. Young Jay Lee up on top. Double stomp to the back. Young Jay Lee retains the three pistols championship. A tremendous title defense from the champion, still champion, Myung J. Lee. These two men, the hatred they have for each other, and it's a two way. I talked about Reverso's obsession with Gabriel Fuerza. Fuerza hates Reverso with every cell in his body. There's only one way to settle it. There's only one way to end a rivalry like this, and that is in a cold, unforgiving steel cage. Sword shouldn't have even allowed out for this. Hey, listen now. Like, you guys have been out of control the last couple months here. I don't look great on IWTV. You did a moonsault on the hip. You hit people in the front row. We've got legal threats coming at us now. So, with this contract, it's not just a contract for this cage match, guys. It's also a peace bond. And that means that you guys cannot touch each other until that cage door shuts and the bell rings at the next event. Because that's guys. We can't, we can't have you guys ruining every show. Makes sense. Gabriel Fuerza has not blinked. He has not taken his eyes off of Reverso. So Reverso has signed the contract and the peace bond. Reverso, I've tried to be the bigger person. I tried to make amends for what I did to you, and I even tried to be the good person that these people believe me to be. Yeah. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I'm gonna fail them. Because you, as well as anybody, knows that I am not of a person, and quite frankly, I am tired of pretending to be. Next month, I'm gonna lock you, I'm gonna lock me, and I'm gonna lock the rest of my demons inside of that steel gate, and I'm gonna remind you why I was the person to take that mask from you in the place. We might need more security in the ring. Tyler, get out of there. Sean Gibson just apparently hiring people from the crowd to uh, for security. I was calm as ever. So you're telling me when I sign this, I can no longer put my hands on him. Oh, Fuerza. Looking to get a cheap shot in Reversal before he signed the contract. Oh, Reversal's got the sword. Tyler, get out of there. I'd send you to help him, but you would just run away. And he leave just him there. put his sword through the through the chair. This is a dangerous situation. He just put his sword through the contract and the chair. Fuerza, what are you doing? 
Fuerza with the Witcher lock on one of our young security guards. Gabriel Fuerza has snapped. Oh, watch out with the sword. It's official. Gabriel Fuerza has signed the contract. Next month, we will have Reverso and Gabriel Fuerza locked inside a steel cage. Mike, can you explain to me why Evan Greenway is out here? He does not have a management license for Barry. Evan Greenway is out here because Barry management won't do anything about these guys. Ooh, but shots fired. This is the debut in Barry of Locked and Loaded, the team of Clutch Jesse V and the Golden Gun Mark Wheeler. Yeah, it's actually, it's amazing. All the years that Mark Wheeler and Jesse V have been together in Barry Wrestling Rings, they've never actually had a tag match. Well, sorry, I don't want to talk over the crowd and their, their lovely interactions here with Clay Wilson. And I guess this team of so John, At John Atlas and Clay Wilson is now the top tier talent? I thought you weren't going to talk over our fans. I gotta do my job. I gotta earn my five bucks. Yes, John Atlas and Clay Wilson are top tier talent. And as much as I hate to say anything nice about Clay Wilson, anyone who's aligned with John Atlas is top tier talent. Uh, I don't know how top tier Clay Wilson looks right now. I'm not sure what the coaching strategy was, but I feel like running shoulder blocks with Jesse B was, was not a good idea. Jesse laying out Atlas and Greenway, and then Wilson, of course, with the cheap shot from behind. You know, I'd be totally okay to just watch Clay Wilson run into Jesse B a dozen times. He'll just wear himself out, I promise you. Well, the top tier talent going for a double suplex in Jesse B. The strength, that's superhuman strength. Unbelievable from Clutch Jesse. Now Wheeler ducks a double clothesline, diving cross body, taking out both Clay Wilson and John Atlas. And then a meeting of the minds for the top tier talent. And Wheeler, butterfly suplex into a backbreaker. He took his eyes off Atlas. Atlas sends Wheeler in. Wheeler changing directions and a running lariat. And he's got him up fireman's carry. Into a gut buster. Wheeler, a house on fire right now. Rolls Atlas into the middle of the ring. Just a two count. And of course, this match came about because Atlas, Greenaway, and Clay Wilson turned on Mark Wheeler in the November on during our November show with that five-on-five five elimination match. And Wheeler eats a super kick from Atlas. And while Wheeler was attacked, Jesse V signed to let bygones be bygones with his old friend, came to Mark Wheeler's aid. And that leads us to this. And leads us to the really odd thing of when Mark Wheeler walked out tonight for the very first time, we heard people cheering for him. It's true, Mark Wheeler, who has been maybe the most hated man in Barry Wrestling for most of his career, but that just goes to show you how hated Clay Wilson is. That his hate is so deep that it actually makes other people good. If you're waiting for me to disagree, I'm not going to disagree, Mike. I mean, Clay Wilson, the back-to-back -back winner of most hated wrestler in Barry Wrestling. First time that has ever happened to Barry Wrestling. And in an absolute landslide both years. And look at the, the top-tier cheaters. Greenway getting involved from the outside. Did they even get... Wilson and Atlas even got matching tights and trunks. That's what teams do. See, the thing is, John Atlas has been a leader of teams his entire life. He's a man who's a star in high school, a star in university. He brings together elite talent and they take over anywhere they go. And a two count there from Atlas, as you were saying that, an incredible delayed vertical suplex. Atlas keeping Wheeler up there, and Wheeler is not a small man. Atlas, arguably the best athlete we've ever had here in Barry. I, I understand you may not like his attitude, but it's inarguable. We have never had anyone with the athletic comp accomplishments of John Atlas. That's true, but, oh, and Wheeler going for an inside cradle. Nearly count, and that was an incredible move by Mark Wheeler. He went in a small package. Atlas tried to counter, and Wheeler shifted his body weight to still get it, but Atlas with a drop kick coming out of it, and a two count of his own. 
Atlas and Wilson doing a good job keeping Mark Wheeler isolated, keeping Jesse V out of the ring, which not to side with Wilson and Atlas, but if I'm in any tag match and I can keep Jesse V out of the ring as my opponent, I will do everything in my power to do that. Can you take a look at Mark Wheeler? You telling me that's a guy you want to be in the ring with? He's a monster. Every month we say Mark Wheeler's in the best shape of his life, and somehow he comes back, he's even bigger, even stronger. Yeah, but Jesse looks like Mark Wheeler if he ate Mark Wheeler. It really is quite amazing though. We have three of the most physically imposing men in Barry Wrestling and Clay Wilson. Clay Wilson's physically imposing. Ish. Oh. Right now, Wilson, regardless of how you think of him, he's got the advantage in the ring. And again, the quick tag. Wilson and Atlas, I believe this is their first time tagging, just the two of them. But they're showing great chemistry. To your point, John Atlas is a leader. Why are they always going to make me look bad? It's kind of your bit. Well, Atlas with an accidental right hand to Clay Wilson, and then Wheeler with an intentional right hand to Atlas. Pump kick takes down Clay Wilson. And Evan Greenaway showing why he's out here, pulling yeah, Jesse out of the ring. Getting get Jesse V mad is a very poor life decision. Well, Atlas inside the ring taking advantage as Wheeler was unable to tag out. But again, just a two count Wheeler able to kick out. Atlas driving a knee into the small of the back on Mark Wheeler. It's very well, rare you hear this many people agree with something at the same time. Clay Wilson getting distracted by the Barry Wrestling crowd. Mark Wheeler, he might have turned over a new leaf, but he's still a triple crown winner here in Barry. He's still one of the most accomplished wrestlers we have ever had. And just because the crowd likes him a bit better, I don't think that's going to change Mark much. Uh, I'll tell you, we talked about it on the Barry uh, Wrestling Awards show. I don't know if anyone's ever had the type of year that Mark Wheeler did in 2021, leading Barry Wrestling out of the pandemic. And uh, you can never count that man down when he's in the ring. Well, Wheeler able to counter Clay Wilson and then block the cheap shot from Atlas, but Wilson picks the ankle. Maybe going for a Boston Crab here. Wheeler fighting out of it. Reversal into an inside cradle, small package. Two count, Wilson able to kick out. Wilson going for a back suplex. Wheeler flips out of it, great counter. And then a back suplex of his own, high angle, planting Ontario's least favorite wrestler. Quebec's worst export since all oh, the Montreal Canadiens. Careful, you're gonna get us banned. Wheeler makes the tag. Here comes Clutch Jesse V. Down goes John Atlas. And a clothesline for Wilson, and another one. Atlas, or Jesse sends Wilson in, and a big power slam. Oh, Evan Greenway, you want to come in? Why is he in the ring? Nearly countered, but then... Jesse gets him up for the double underhook pile driver. Greenway's a big man. I don't know if his nickname can still be indestructible, because I think Jesse V just broke him. And he just caught Atlas with one hand. Unreal! He just, he just hit a guy with another guy. He just beat Clay Wilson with John Atlas. And John Atlas is huge. He's an inside linebacker. The athleticism from Atlas there at the drop kick. The referee has lost all control of this match. All four men now in the ring. Wheeler with the super kick. That caught Atlas flush. Wheeler up onto the second rope. Drop kick right into the mouth. Atlas ends up on the outside. Evan Greenway is still out on the outside. Oh. Super kick to the back of the head on the kneeling. Wilson and then Jesse V's full body weight crushing him. This could be it. Oh, I'm glad it's not. Fully loaded. Count to 100. Clay Wilson is done. Fulker locked and loaded. Win. What an incredible night of action. And next week on Rush Hour, we've got Gabriel Fuerza versus Reverso locked inside a steel cage. 
But as great as that is, there is nothing better than seeing Barry Wrestling live and in person. If you are anywhere in the Barry area, you need to be at the Barry Wrestling 10th Anniversary Show. Featuring TNA star Jody Threat, IWTV Tag Champs Fresh Air, and so much more. November 2nd, 5 p.m. at 49 Ferris Lane here in Barry. Reach out to Barry Wrestling on any social media platform to get your tickets. For TCO and Diamond Jim, I'm Mike Jeffries. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you here next week.